from the Stroh Center in Bowling Green, Ohio. We have a Tuesday night Mid-American Conference versus SEC matchup as the Bowling Green Falcons welcome in the number one ranked South Carolina Gamecocks. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us alongside Brandon Bosch. I'm Brad Wozniki. For Bowling Green, the month of December has been one top 25 challenge after another. The Falcons began the month at Iowa in front of a crowd of almost 15,000. The Hawkeyes rank number four in the country. This Friday, Bowling Green will see number 15, Indiana, in Bloomington. But right now, a unique opportunity with number one in the Stroh. And you've got to relish this opportunity here at home. We're going to have a great crowd in the Stroh Center tonight. But really, overall, this month of December is going to make this Bowling Green team better. When they get ready for the stretch run, you go into February and March when they're getting into deep MAC play. You know, they're going to be ready because of the opponents that they've seen throughout the month of December. And one player that has never backed down for a challenge for Bowling Green is the senior from Cincinnati, Ohio, Lexi Fleming. One of the top defenders in the Mid-American Conference really put her skills on display in that game against Iowa when she went for 24 points, 7 rebounds, and 3 steals. And beyond being a great defender, she's an extremely dynamic offensive player. She takes great care of the basketball, very uns unselfish, shoots a high percentage from both 2 and 3, and man, can she attack the rim. For her size, it's very impressive of what she's able to do offensively, but tonight is going to be a completely different challenge against the Trees from South Carolina. Size will, without a doubt, be a factor in this game when you're starting with South Carolina's Camilla Cardoza, six foot seven senior, runs the floor very well, averages a double double, and one of the top shot blockers in the nation. And you love what Cardoza brings to the table more so than just what she does on the floor. It's what she does in terms of her leadership. She waited her turn behind Aaliyah Boston. You see her now really shining as she steps into the limelight for this South Carolina team. And she's doing great. She's getting other players involved. She has a wonderful job around the hoop, a great rebounder, a great shot blocker, as you said. And as she goes, this South Carolina team goes, but man, are they deep. They can get everybody involved. A great team overall. And that's why they're ranked number one in the country. Time now to take a look at the starting five. First for South Carolina will be Tahina Pow Pow, Camilla Cardozo, Mylasia Paul Wiley, the five foot ten freshman, Chloe Kitts, six foot two sophomore, and Bree Hall, excellent outside shooter, the junior, making the return to her home state as she is out of Dayton, Ohio. For the Bowling Green Falcons, playing just their third home game of the season, the Falcons will look like this. Amy Velasco, Sophie Zekin making her second consecutive start. Paige Kohler, Olivia Hill, and Lexi Fleming, the five foot five senior. A mix of experience in that Bowling Green starting lineup, and a starting lineup that has altered a bit as the season has gone along. Bowling Green 2-0 here at home this season. We'll face one of the most familiar faces in women's college basketball, Dawn Staley, 16th season. As a head coach, a couple of national titles there in 2017 and 2022. Damage has been done in the NCAA tournament. And now she's going to be facing a familiar face in her former assistant coach, Fred Shamir. And you love what Coach Saley does with her squad. She will play anywhere, anytime, any place. And how awesome is it that she comes back here for Coach Shamil? to play his Bowling Green Falcons in his first year as a head coach after all the time he put in to the South Carolina program, the Temple program before that, which Coach Saley, as she was coming kind of up through the ranks in terms of coaching. You gotta love what she's doing with her squad. You gotta love what she does for her staff. A real staple of the game, and then you see there Coach Shamil off to a great start here in his Bowling Green career. And Fred Shamil has not only coached with Dawn Staley, he has also coached Dawn Staley. I remember her from her days with the Charlotte Sting in the WNBA. We are ready for the tip-off here inside the throw on Bill Frack Court. It'll be Cardozo and Olivia Hill to jump. Got to switch up the sides, get things straightened out from the beginning here. South Carolina has won 22 consecutive road games. Bowling Green's last time out was a win down at Wright State in front of a great crowd there. Opening possession for the Gamecocks. South Carolina, one of the top scoring teams in the nation, averaging better than 90 points a game. Nice high-low action, easy one down low to get it started for Chloe Kitts. And you see right there the unselfishness from Cardoso. Not only is she a great scorer inside, but a wonderful passer. Great hands, as we said in the open. Sixth woman of the year last year for the nation. 
Alexi Fleming dealing with that size, tried to reverse. And back comes Pow Pow. Looking inside immediately for Cardozo, the catch and score. That took about five seconds. Yeah, there's not a whole lot you can do for six foot seven. That's about two feet away from the block. She found a great spot there. Wonderful pass inside. Easy bucket. Olivia Hill, corner three is good. For Liv Hill, that is a part of her game that she has improved upon throughout her time at Bowling Green. She is now five out of ten from distance this season. And a three at the other end, a quick answer from Bree Hall. One of the players you cannot leave open for South Carolina on the perimeter. You absolutely not, cannot, and she's been coming on as of late, especially from three, but if you're Bowling Green, got to change something up on the defensive end. Way too easy a looks early in this one. And Olivia Hill just earned herself a couple of free throws. That three for Bree Hall, her 17th of the season, shoots it at 38%. And while Olivia Hill steps to the line, the keys for the Falcons. You look at the first one, just survive this first quarter. If you're going to pull an upset, which we've seen in basketball throughout the years, it happens. You're going to have to survive at the beginning of this game. And I think defensively, you're going to have to switch it up from what we've seen already. And the second key there, play clean. You can't give up second chance points. You can't get lost defensively. You've got to take care of the basketball. No live ball turnovers. Again, those two keys are going to keep Bowling Green in this game. Get out of this first quarter. Be in the game. See what you can do. Put the pressure on South Carolina. After those two makes, Hill now 9 out of 15 at the charity stripe this season. And a two-point ball game about a minute and a half in. Hall again, opposite corner this time, and it's South Carolina by five. A great start for Hall coming back to Ohio, the Huber Heights Wayne product. She's got a large contingent there behind the South Carolina bench cheering her on, and what a start. Bree Hall is one of the reasons why, as Velasco gets a nice basket underneath, Hall is one of the reasons why Dawn Staley during her time here at South Carolina is having one of her best three-point shooting teams. They're knocking down about seven threes a game at 40%. Beyond that, she's a heck of a recruiter, Staley, and who would not want to play for one of the legends in the women's game? Pow Pow got a little bit of space, knocks down the three of her own. That's her 25th, and shooting it at a career best, 51%. She's been just kind of the engine that could for this team. Just a little bit of everything, a solid defender, great on the offensive end. Again, unselfish. That's a theme for this South Carolina team, very unselfish. Well, to add to your point, Pow Pow will pick her spots of when she's going to look for her offense and find her teammates. And off the back rim, rebounded by Cardozo. Underneath, an easy transition bucket for Chloe Kitts. South Carolina loves to run the floor, and they have just pushed their lead to eight. With two and a half minutes gone by, taking us into our first timeout. It's the Gamecocks 15, the Falcons 7 here on ESPN. South Carolina by eight, almost three minutes into this first quarter. Brad Wozniki back with Brandon Bosch and South Carolina up to number four in the country in scoring offense, just over 92 points a game. And you can get there when you get the shots that they get. Six for six to start in this game. And it's been unselfish play by South Carolina as well. They move the ball extremely well. They move off the ball. And that's what this program has kind of been built into. Offensively, very dynamic. They play a lot of players. Everybody can score. And so far, they've been perfect offensively in this game. Bowling Green offensively on the season, averaging almost 70 points a game. The Falcons are the top scoring teams in the Mid-American Conference. As Kohler hangs, a little bit of contact there, but not enough to draw a whistle. And out and running is South Carolina. Pow Pow looks inside, now goes to Kitts. Kitts goes right to work against Zeke in baseline. Off glass and good. Chance at a three-point play. It's a great spin move by Kitts. Absolutely love her game. A sophomore, but oddly enough, should be a freshman. She left high school early to join this South Carolina team a year ago. Was with them for their stretch run. And who wouldn't want to play for that legendary coach, Don Staley? And what a great addition for this team. As we said, just a sophomore, big-time contributor. Young talent on this squad so far has really showed up. 63% free throw shooter completes the three-point play. She won a gold medal at the 2022 FIBA U18 America's Championships. And then in 2023, another gold medal with the FIBA U19 World Cup team. Double-digit lead for the Gamecocks. Bowling Green so far shooting 40% from the field. 
Here's Paige Kohler, freshman from Olmstead Falls. She's having a great freshman year, but you think if Bowling Green wants to get into this one, it's going to have to be through Fleming. To the corner, Hill hit from there before. This time she's blocked as Kitt's got her fingertips on it. South Carolina, the top shot blocking team in the country. And they turn the block into a quick three at the other end for Raven Johnson, her 11th triple. Let's talk about the unselfishness and the dynamic offense that South Carolina has. Still perfect over halfway through this first quarter. Eight for eight from the field. And they absolutely blitzed Presbyterian the other night to a 21 point lead after one. And they look well on their way early in this one. Bowling Green desperately needs an answer on the offensive end and on the defensive end. Final score in that Presbyterian game was 99 to 29. South Carolina just missed, hitting the century mark for the sixth time this season. They put up a season high, 114 against number 14 ranked Maryland. As far as ranked opponents, the Gamecocks have also seen number 10 Notre Dame, number 24 UNC, and number 11 Utah. And one team not ranked, but that gave South Carolina one of the biggest challenges so far was Duke when they played at Cameron Indoor. And that was a wonderful game, and you really saw in that one Cardosa on full display. I thought she had a great game in that one. And here's where South Carolina really kills you, is they just walk in three more superstars off their bench that are ready to go, and they just come at you in waves. And when you're a team like Bowling Green, that's just so difficult, because not only are they bringing skill off the bench, they're bringing size. South Carolina's bench averages 36 points a game. Doubling the post. Got Cardozo on the bench right now. Sakima Walker is out there, and Bowling Green able to force a turnover. Up ahead to Morgan Sharps, the sharpshooter for Bowling Green. And the transfer from Xavier has been solid. Off the bench for Bowling Green, a spark plug at times offensively. Has a wonderful three-point stroke. Didn't make her first appearance for Bowling Green until Thanksgiving, when the Falcons were down in Savannah and came away with a couple of wins. And Fleming just cannot find any room to operate. Deep three on the way for Fleming. Back rim. Here comes Full Wiley. Look inside. Ashlyn Watkins giving it up. Walker, contact. And that's going to be two for Sakima Walker. Walker is finding her footing. The Columbus, Ohio product. Columbus Afrocentric, then was at Rutgers before she bumped to Juco and has now found her way to South Carolina. You see the great move and the physical play inside by Bowling Green. And Walker, what a great contributor off the bench to just bring six foot four, six foot five post player behind your six foot seven post player. Coach Don Staley has absolutely got to love that. When Walker was playing Juco ball at Northwest Florida, she was the Juco player of the year, averaging 16 points, eight boards a game. And when you're Coach Staley, you don't need to take every player. I think she goes out there and she finds people who fit what she wants to do. Again, that unselfish play, being dynamic offensively and defensively, and you see everyone on this squad, not only offensively as a threat, but defensively, they love to get after it. And that is something that Robin Frelick also focused on during her time here as the head coach at Bowling Green, and Fred Shamil wants to continue. Robin Frelick now the head coach at Michigan State, as Erica Porter off that pump fake is fouled underneath, and one of the newest Falcons will go to the line. Porter, the transfer from Baylor. Again, we like what Porter brings to the table. And then you saw there just laid on the help the helper. Watkins dove down just a tad late, got the foul call on her. And I think, again, if you're Bowling Green, I like what we're getting so far out of the play of Porter. She's brought that physical presence inside. You know, you've seen her kind of bounce in and out of the starting lineup. I think if they're going to make any kind of run in this game, it's the size that they're going to need inside and the physicality that she's brought to the table so far. Six starts this season for Porter. Came off the bench last game. Five points, three rebounds in 11 minutes. On the season, averaging seven and a half points a game. And sometimes it's just an adjustment in terms of style, getting used to a new coach, figuring out your place on the team. And if coming off the bench works best for Porter and helping this team, that's what you got to do. And Hall's got another, and that barely touched the net. Five of five from distance is South Carolina. And it's so difficult to defend when South Carolina is hitting from three. 
because of their size inside, it's just pick your poison. You really, you don't have a lot of options if you're Bowling Green. You're trying to pack the lane right now, but in giving up the three-pointers that South Carolina has been perfect on. Pow, pow, great pass up ahead to Full Wiley, who will be challenged and still gets all the way to the basket. Full Wiley actually looked for a foul at the end of that. Morgan Sharps at the end, catch and shoot, got it. Morgan Sharps doing what she does best. Sharps last game, 19 points. She had 16 of the 19 in the third quarter and finished the game five out of seven from three. That's a great job by Bowling Green, picking their opportunities to get out in transition. Lexi Fleming sprinting out after that miss. Sharps wanted to let it go. And Porter trying to post up. And Bowling Green's going to set up the offense. And Fleming gets caught there between two defenders, trying to rip it through. And a jump ball will keep it with Bowling Green. And nothing so far has come easy for the star from Bowling Green. Fleming has found absolutely zero room to operate. And kudos to Bree Hall on that help. Was over just in time, stepped in front of the driving Fleming. You see here on the replay. Ready to take the charge. Definitely had two hands on the basketball. Good call by the officials. Tessa Johnson just checked in for South Carolina as Fleming creates the separation, just grazed the front of the iron. Bowling Green's two out of six beyond the arc. And Fleming is being forced to shoot from nearly what in high school would be the volleyball line because of the length and athleticism of South Carolina. Under three minutes to play, first quarter. Right back out to Walker. Just above the free throw line, can't connect. Good box out by Hill. And Sharps, not afraid for that pull up jumper, but much more on the catch and shoot than off the dribble. He's a star at Newark High School, just outside of Columbus, Ohio. Made a couple trips to the Final Four. Underneath, Sharps to Porter for the high percentage look. You love the dish off by Sharps offensive spark plug we talked about it heading into this when she comes into the game sometimes bowling green is at their best offensively because they just become more dynamic and more difficult to defend especially on the perimeter and you saw the beneficiary there in porter to the corner for wiley tries a three too much on it unable to draw iron and the bowling green faithful will let her know about it up ahead to velasco bowling green does not have numbers Out to Sharps, the catch and shoot, got it again. And what a quick trigger by Sharps on that one. The catch and quick release, and Bowling Green. The Falcons get a foul at the other end, trying to knock that ball away from Walker. Morgan Sharps, by the way, 42% for her career from three, and that is third all time at Bowling Green. It's really impressive. And again, you love what she brings to the table. And you see here the dish and kick. It's that quick release for me that is just so impressive to be a good shooter. But to be able to get your shot off that quickly against a team like this in South Carolina is going to be absolutely necessary because of the length that they bring to the table. Last season was cut short for Sharps because of an ACL injury. Ended up playing in 17 games. We near a minute. South Carolina trying to keep this double-digit lead. Shot rims out for Full Wiley. South Carolina settling for jump shots here with Kitts on the bench. And Full Wiley bothering Velasco out high. Velasco keeping her dribbled and can't make the connection with Fleming. Bowling Green's second turnover. And you hate to see it because South Carolina with five misses in a row now. Coach Staley, a little irked, a little frustrated so far. Her team got off to a great start, but has struggled in the second half of this quarter with Kitts and Cardoso on the bench. Haven't been able to find that inside presence that they had early in this game. 5'11 senior Jasmine Clerkley just in the ball game for Bowling Green. Tessa Johnson picks up a loose ball. Her pull up rims off. And we're going back to Bowling Green with 33 seconds left. So you're still going to have a chance here, South Carolina, for the final shot. See how quickly Bowling Green goes. I think if you're Bowling Green, you take a good shot because you know you're going to have to defend. It's 
going to be really hard to run offense for 30 straight seconds against this suffocating defense of South Carolina. Fleming left open. A little bit strong. Rebounded by Raven Johnson. It's Fleming's first clean look of the evening. Raven Johnson working around Watkins. Pulls up. Came up short. And time expires here in the first. South Carolina puts up 28 points in the first 10 minutes. Bowling Green not going away. Falcons down 10 going to the second quarter. Threes were going down early for Bree Hall. Gamecocks are five out of seven beyond the arc. Bowling Green, though, can hit from distance as well. Morgan Sharps has found a couple from long range. 28-18 your score after one. Chloe Kitts off the glass to get things started for South Carolina here in quarter number two. Kitts with nine of South Carolina's 30 points. As Bowling Green shooting 41% in that first quarter, having to work for everything, Brandon, but the ball movement has been effective. It has, and really the latter half of that first quarter, BG really started to find something offensively with Sharps. And Sharps had a pretty good look there. Offensive rebound for Clarkley. That is really impressive to get that offensive board between the size of South Carolina. Lexi Fleming tripped up trying to split the defense. And that foul went against Tessa Johnson. Love what Fleming did there, trying to split the defense and attack the lane. She's just had so little room to operate tonight. And we're playing the number one team in the country for a reason. And defensively, they have just read the scouting report, and they know that if this Bowling Green team is going to pull the upset, it's going to be through Fleming, and they have thrown different defenders at her. You see now Johnson. You had Bree Hall do a great job in that first quarter. She's just had no room to breathe. Velasco no good. Cardozo's got it. South Carolina started the game 8 of 8 from the field. Right now, 64% for the game. Cardozo had it knocked away as Clerkley held her ground. The help came over. South Carolina just hasn't found the flow offensively that they had early in this one. You like the lineup, though, with Kitson and Cardozo. That high-low look that they were able to get early and often is just very difficult to defend. Under 10 on the shot clock. Velasco has got Cardozo in front of her. Does get a shot up, and it looked like Cardozo got a piece of it. Love Cardozo running the floor there. Pow Pow sees a little space, rims out on that three. And we get a South Carolina foul. And that foul goes against Chloe Kitts. Sophie Zekin's going to return for Bowling Green and Bree Hall for South Carolina. You like what Clerk Lee did there on the glass and a little bit of a spark plug inside. Very undersized, especially in this matchup, but the effort was there, caused some issues for those South Carolina bigs. And Clerk Lee has been earning her minutes when she's been out there. Had a career high nine points and 10 boards in Bowling Green's win over Duquesne. I think she understands her role, and that's super important when you come off the bench. Morgan Sharps didn't miss it by much. Cross court pass to Hall. Hall drives immediately. Left hand good. See how explosive she was off that first dribble. She's just so silky smooth. From three, the shot is just pure. And then when she attacks the rim, she can finish with both hands. A wonderful athlete, great defender, really dynamic player for this South Carolina team. Hall, one of two players to start every game so far. Her cousin Trey Williams plays basketball at Duquesne. Her cousin Nate Johnson plays at Akron. And that one would not go down. Tipped out by Hill. There's two on three the other way. Cardozo. Off the hall. And we got a three-second call. Paige Kohler's going to return for Bowling Green. I think everyone in the throw center was begging for that three-second call. Just a couple of seconds early, but Cardozo got deep in the lane on that one. Just couldn't find her footing. 
Fine, solid defense by Bowling Green. They've done us a good job, really, since that first onslaught in the first quarter of handling the bigs of South Carolina, which I think if we had said that coming into this one, we'd be a bit surprised. Taya Ellis, just into the ball game, six foot one freshman from Toronto. Very good athlete for Bowling Green, runs the floor well. Looking for her overall offensive skill to continue to develop as she continues on with Bowling Green. But we like she, what she does on the glass, and I think right now that's what Bowling Green needs inside. Fleming gets the look. Lexi Fleming scoreless in this one. Every time she catches it, she's got one or two defenders running out at her, if not already a hand in her face. And you'd think at some point the first is going to fall, and then Lexi Fleming will really get herself going. Cardozo had great position, and she gets that deep. There's no stopping her. She got into the body there of Zeitgen. And Card Cardozo, finish. twice this season, has gone for 20. At a season high, 23 against South Dakota State. She's not the kind of player who's going to drop 40 on you, but man, she makes the 20 count. Raven Johnson, the steal and score. Oh, Raven Johnson suffered a season ending knee injury in her freshman season, playing in just two games. Comes back to play in all but one last season and had the best assist to turnover ratio by a South Carolina freshman. She's super efficient, very unselfish. Plays with a high motor as well. You got to love that as a coach. Morgan Sharps gets her first points inside the arc, give her eight for the ball game. 16-point game almost midway through the second. Pow Pow wide open in the corner. Her second three. BG went back to a zone look on that possession, and they were in that 1-3-1 one, one look early in the game, and they were giving up corner threes and those high point threes. And you see again, South Carolina read the defense well. Used to seeing some zone defenses throughout the year. South Carolina forced a turnover, and Lexi Fleming not giving up on the play, knocks it away at the end. It's a great defensive effort. And you love the leadership you see out of Lexi Fleming. Has struggled offensively in this one early. But you see there, she's still going 110% at all times. High motor player, working hard to get back defensively. Great job to not only get the block, but to do it without fouling against the must more bigger and physical pow pow. Kitts against Hill, fading away. Beautiful touch, under control. She's got 11 points in each of the last two games. She's got 11 in this one after that last bucket. And that was about as old school a move as you'll see there. The nice little touch, fade away one-hander. Sharps finds two more around the paint. Sharps, not just a danger from three, has dished and has drove so far in this one for Bowling Green. Speaking of dangers from three, that's Bree Hall. She's got 14. Have to be aware of Hall at this point. Has been perfect from three in this one. Now the takeaway. All the way for the bucket off the steal. Sanaya Fagan, six foot three junior from Ellenwood, Georgia. Fagan did a great job of getting into the body of the defender. And Bowling Green gonna catch their breath, call timeout with 408 remaining in the second quarter. 46-22 your score. into quick offense against the Bowling Green team that is second in the Mid-American Conference and scoring just under 70 points a game. And the Falcons know how to shoot it from the field at 44%, also second in the conference. Dangerous from distance, 38%. And you think about what Bowling Green has done so far in this one, and they've been highly competitive, and that's been without Lexi Fleming on the scorebook. She, you know, she hasn't been able to contribute, hasn't been able to find a lot of room to operate, and that's a no fault of her own, but again, been held in check for the most part against this very talented South Carolina defense. You've got shooter on shooter guarding one another right now with Hall and Sharps. As Velasco being guarded by Kitts. Got to get a shot up, time winding down, and Banks able to get around Zania Fagan. Amy Velasco beats the horn. 
Velasco out of Centerville, Ohio, has been a contributor every year on campus. You've seen her role continue to expand as her time has gone on here at Bowling Green. Congratulations to Amy Velasco, went out over the Thanksgiving break, and she got engaged. Congratulations to Amy. And Paige Kohler will hand it off to Velasco. Velasco being chased by Raven Johnson. I like the move to check Porter back in. She did a nice job in that first quarter. was a physical presence inside. Kohler lobs inside, and Porter wasn't looking for it. Lexi Fleming's going to return for Bowling Green. And Mylasia Full Wiley back for South Carolina. Full Wiley, one of the hometown products there in Columbia, South Carolina. Won four state titles in six seasons at W.J. Keenan High School. Had over 3,000 career points. And you'd think she's the heir apparent of the future at South Carolina. Zaya Cook moving on to the pro ranks. You'd think she's the next great port guard at South Carolina. She's had a great start to her career. You know, by the way, Zaya Cook played her high school ball at Rogers about 20 minutes from Bowling Green. Now a member of the Los Angeles Sparks playing for head coach Kurt Miller, who we will hear from at halftime. Lexi Fleming along the baseline. Gets her first bucket. You love how Fleming has just kept herself in this game. Has not found a lot of space. Nice little back cut there. Good finish. Ball comes up a little bit short. Porter pulls in the board. Porter in limited minutes has really made her presence be felt. She's going to be a player that's going to continue to work to try and find her way into this offense. And here, Kitts went for the steal, opening up the lane, and a hard foul on Porter. She was knocked down by Fagan. And we know what Porter is capable of. The Baylor transfer, just really looking for some consistency. And like we said, she's kind of been in and out of the lineup. You see there, wonderful job. Kitts got a little aggressive, drove the lane. That looked like a very clean block. Maybe got her on the body just a tad. But if you're Bowling Green right now, an opportunity to cut into that 20-point lead of South Carolina. Well, it hasn't gone quite according to plan. I think you've got to be relatively happy with your leading scorer getting her first bucket with nearly two minutes left in the first half of this game. You've been very competitive. You handled the onslaught to start. We'll see what we can do here for the rest of the second quarter. Erica Porter had quite the debut for Bowling Green when she had 20 points, 16 in the second half. One of two games in which she has had 20 points. Outside of that, single digits in every other game. That's adding to your point about consistency for Porter as we get a 30-second timeout taken by Dawn Staley in South Carolina. Well, coming up at halftime, we will hear from former Bowling Green head coach Kurt Miller. We'll also talk with current Bowling Green head football coach Scott Leffler to talk about the upcoming bowl game as Bowling Green football will be playing in the Quick Lane Bowl up at Ford Field against a familiar opponent in Minnesota in that MAC Big Ten matchup. Last time Bowling Green and Minnesota met, Bowling Green won in Minnesota. And speaking of the career of Kurt Miller as the head coach at Bowling Green, 2001 to 2012, 737 win percentage, and familiarity, especially in 2007 with the NCAA tournament when Bowling Green got to the Sweet 16, a special season when Bowling Green was still playing in the house that roars, Anderson Arena. And he holds a special place in the heart of, I think, every Bowling Green fan because of the success that they had while he was here. And it's great to see him continue that success, not only you know, at other Division I colleges, but then moving on to the pro ranks as well. A true spokesman for Bowling Green. Kerr Miller has been the head coach in the WNBA for the Connecticut Sun and now the Los Angeles Sparks. I think you've just got to be very careful if you're Bowling Green. You cannot allow yourself to get buried in the post as you saw there with Porter. It's just too easy for South Carolina to go up and finish over the top. And you see there a nice pivot move by Watkins, able to finish over the top of Porter, putting her on the bench with the foul. 2022 South Carolina State Gatorade Player of the Year. She's come off the bench in every game, averaging 17 minutes a game. Draining the three, Morgan Sharps, her third. She's got a Baker's dozen in this first half. Definitely one of the highlights for Bowling Green has been the offensive play of Sharps. 
And Brandon, going back to that last three there, she had missed her last few after coming in hot off the bench. Just getting those few buckets in and around the paint, I think, helped her from long range there. Well, beyond that, shooters, and especially shooters of the caliber of Sharps, are always going to feel like the next one's going in, and that's what makes them elite. You look at her, such a high percentage shooter. She knows how she can operate on the three-point line. Like we said, with a quick release against a team like this, you're going to have your opportunities because they've tried to really play aggressively. You're going to get some slips. You're going to get some rolls. You're going to have some chances for three. Morgan Sharps, because of what she did last time out against Wright State, was just named the Mid-American Conference Player of the Week. She was one point shy of Bowling Green's record for points in a quarter when she had 16 in the third against Wright State down at the Nutter Center. That's a great sign if you're born green. You know, you look at them, and I think long-term, big picture, do you want to make some noise in the back moving forward? And I think if they're going to do that, they've got to continue to develop some depth. And I think Porter being that kind of in and out of the starting lineup, you know that she's kind of becoming a little bit more consistent. And as she does, it's a big piece for this Bowling Green team. And then Sharps is the other major one for me. If you have a dynamic card that you can bring off the bench, dispel some breaks for Flemings and not just have your offense go completely into the gutter, I think that that's going to be big for this Bowling Green team that, you know, has played well and looks to make some noise. You've got Ball State and Toledo, probably your top two teams right now, at least in the map. But Bowling Green is absolutely sitting right there, right behind those two teams. And you feel like night in or night out, they can absolutely do some damage. See where the offensive foul was called against Fagan. The officials going over the monitor take another look at it. And Cardozo is going to check in. When he took a look at that play in full speed, it doesn't seem like there was really any intent with the elbow, and I think that's what the officials were checking there to make sure it was a clean play. Just a pivot move. Face got in the way of the elbow, unfortunately, and we're back to playing as we should be. Set up the screen for Hill. Fleming right wing. We'll get it right back from Zekin. And Hall back on Fleming, and that's been tough for Fleming. And that has been her matchup. The much longer Hall just has almost enveloped her. The six foot tall guard versus the five foot five Fleming. It's been a tough go tonight. And then at times you'll see Raven Johnson also on Fleming. And Raven Johnson, similar in her style of play to Fleming as far as how she wants to get up right in the jersey, be up in your face, and try and poke the ball free to get some steals. And those are two players that are offensively very dynamic, but they take a lot of pride in what they do on the defensive end, and I think that's really important. And Lexi Fleming, one of the players that Bowling Green wants at the line. You see three Falcons in the top ten in the Mid-American Conference in free throw percentage, Fleming at 84%. That's one of those keys when you're trying to make a run come February and March. Can you make your free throws? Do you take care of the basketball? Bowling Green has shown so far that they are great from the free throw line. Cardozo was trying to post up. They go over to Pow Pow. She finds Cardozo. Nice look across the paint. Watkins couldn't get it to go. And Watkins tied up Zekin, ripped it away. And first we got a jump ball. It will be Bowling Green basketball. Well, on that, Watkins wasn't able to finish, but what a pass by Cardoso. And you see she's such a threat offensively because if she's on the block, you got six foot seven bearing you. And then you see here that quick touch pass to Watkins. Just couldn't finish through the contact, but very unselfish. You see one of those pillars of the South Carolina team. Everybody getting involved on the offensive end of the floor. Fleming off the high screen. Got it to Kohler, who's in trouble there. Doubled immediately. Out to Sharps. Sharps against Hall, floats it up, off the mark, rebounded by Cardozo, and South Carolina can hold for the final shot. And Cardozo did just enough to change that shot for Sharps. They're going to elevate and get to the right to get around the outstretched hand of Cardozo. You think six foot seven, outstretched hand, probably reaching about seven feet tall. Pow Pow drains the three straight away. Nine points in the first half to go along with five assists and a couple of boards. Kohler will heave from midcourt. 52-31, your score after 20 minutes of play here inside the Stroh Center. Bowling Green trying to hold their own on their home floor. Amy Velasco beat the shot clock off the glass. Bree Hall, she has scored inside and out. Nice finish there with the left hand. 
And put in the hands of Sharps, one of her three first half threes. And then the steal and score. South Carolina knows how to turn defense into offense better than anyone. When you're in Bowling Green, if you can't find great pizza, you're in the wrong place because we've got it all over town. Pizza Nello's, Campus Poly Eyes. Missed the days of having Miles, but that's actually now down in South Carolina. So a bonus for South Carolina fans. I'm a loyalist. I'm all about Poly Eyes. So okay. that's my go-to when we're here. All right. South Carolina leads by 21 after 20 minutes of play. Your first half highlights. South Carolina started eight for eight from the field. Watkins got a tough two there to go off the glass. Morgan Sharps, immediate impact off the bench. Absolutely, and if Bowling Green offensively has really gone through Morgan Sharps, as Lexi Fleming has really not been able to find her footing, and that's to no fault of her own, because defensively, you can tell South Carolina has really keyed in on her and not making anything easy. Now for South Carolina, the dynamic duo that you had inside between Cardoso and Kitts, when they were together when they were looking at that high low look they were absolutely deadly and Bowling Green had no answer for their size and their athleticism their ability to pass their ability to shoot and again this is a very dynamic South Carolina team so it's tough to prepare for them but Bowling Green has really fought valiantly so far in this one kids went for the steal there and Porter ended up getting a couple of free throws after the big block attempt there from Fagan and Erica Porter she has also done a good job finishing around the rim when she has gotten her touches Bree Hall showing you why she is one of the shooters you simply cannot leave open. Taking us into our first half numbers, South Carolina shooting 64% from the field, and for Bowling Green to shoot 41%, that is very good for the Falcons, considering South Carolina on the season leads the country in opponent field goal percentage at 28%. And you look deeper into the stats, and I think if you're Bowling Green, the fact that you have not given up any second chance point opportunities is absolutely huge against the much bigger South Carolina. I look at this and you say, South Carolina, number one team in the country. They're gonna be difficult to beat when they're not shooting well, but when they are shooting as well as they have so far in this one, it's gonna be doggone near impossible. Those are your first half highlights and stats, and we are moments away from getting the third quarter underway here inside the Stroh Center. South Carolina ranked number one. One of two top 25 teams in action tonight. The other, North Carolina taking on Oklahoma. But you also have a lot more top 10 teams in action tomorrow. Baylor will be taking on Providence. LSU will take on Coppin State. Then you've got North Carolina State taking on Old Dominion. And Texas will also be in action. You saw there in those rankings, Iowa, the team that knocked South Carolina out of the Final Four last year en route to their NCAA Finals appearance. You also saw LSU, the defending national champions, and who you think would be the biggest foe within the SEC for these Gamecocks. Bowling Green did see Iowa at Iowa on December 2nd. It was a 30-point win for the Hawkeyes. And Caitlin Clark, will she be in the WNBA next year right now? Indiana as the number one pick in the WNBA draft. They had Aaliyah Boston be their host for the WNBA draft, and she brought home number one. And you think whoever gets Caitlin Clark is getting such a dynamic playmaker and an absolute scoring phenom. And one to start this third quarter. Cardozo going to go right to work. That first half for Cardozo. She was two for two from the field and had three rebounds and a couple of assists. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You saw that high-low look there from Kitts to Cardoso. And regardless of who hot, who's high and who's low, South Carolina has just been absolutely deadly in that setup against Bowling Green's zone defensive looks. Just really no answer inside. See what the Falcons can do on their first possession of the quarter. Kohler hasn't had a lot of looks. It's Velasco, six points in the first half. Hands it off to Kohler. And it's tipped and stolen by Raven Johnson, and Kohler able to win it back. 
She'll leave it for Fleming, who thought about the three. It's Kohler dialing it up. Off the side of the rim, and Bree Hall will give it up to Johnson. Kohler with an outstanding prep career at Olmstead Falls near Cleveland, Ohio. Had a chance to watch her in regionals. She was originally committed to play at Buffalo. Things didn't work out the way she would have hoped. And ends up here at Bowling Green where things have worked out very well for both sides. Well, that worked out very well for Fleming. You saw the flare screen. Great set look by Bowling Green to get their superstar going. And to be clear, for Paige Kohler, things changed personnel-wise there at Buffalo. The door opened at Bowling Green. She decided to be a Falcon. Bowling Green is very happy to have her, as you see the freshman who stepped into a starting role and has played valiantly so far, not only in this one, but against this Bowling Green very difficult schedule they've had so far. Velasco looking for an open teammate, finds Fleming back door, baseline. Had to try and go over top the defense, and last touched by South Carolina. And here comes Erica Porter. Porter in the first half. Played a total of eight minutes, three points, four rebounds. Good move by Coach Shamil, getting Porter back in. It felt like her presence inside, just a little bit more physical on the defensive end. Started to give those South Carolina bigs issues late in that first half. And Fleming bumped by Hall along the baseline. It's a little bit of a ticky-tack foul there along the baseline. Fleming having to work for everything. Underneath Porter, the reverse, oh, wouldn't go. It was the right move. Just couldn't finish, but great footwork. Cardoza runs the floor, gets caught too far underneath and stepped out of bounds. And I think even if Cardoso had caught that one cleanly, she was gonna find herself way too deep. As we said, great rim runner as a big deceptively quick at six foot seven. Might not look like she's moving all that fast, but she's covering a lot of ground with each one of those steps. Kohler gonna use the screen. Out to the corner, Hill gets an open look. Olivia Hill, great ball movement by Bowling Green. Great job by Fleming there to make the extra pass. She had a look from the corner. But Hill wide open at the top of the key, cans it for Bowling Green. Hill is two for three beyond the arc, and you go high-low with Cardozo and Kitts. And any combination that you've gone, low-high, high-low with those two, there's just been no answer for Bowling Green. For Kitts, she now has 13 points, needs one more to tie her season high, which is 14. That came against Duke when... Kitts and Hall were the one-two punch that I thought were huge throughout that game to keep South Carolina right where they wanted to be. And Coach Staley has to be really happy with the production out of this sophomore. Kitts, I think she's really, you just look at this team and you see the talent, just the oozing of talent out of their lineup. You think who's the next big superstar they have and Kitts might be the one. Smart cut to the basket, layup for Kitts, and a now a season high 15. And they're just so unselfish. It makes them so difficult to defend. Velasco had to get it off quick and banks it in. Amy Velasco, her 15th three of the season, shooting it at 50%. And Bowling Green not going away quietly. Has found a little bit of rhythm offensively here, but desperately need to stop on the defensive end of the floor. Pow Pow, the back rim on her three-point attempt. Kohler got the screen. Over to Fleming. Fleming bounced pass to Velasco. Pushed it a little too much. Just the sheer, sheer size of South Carolina is changing shots and changing driving lanes for Bowling Green, making it difficult to get anything going at the, at the basket. That was a bunny that Cardozo missed. Four minutes into this third quarter. 61-40, your score. There's a 21-point lead for South Carolina at the half. Good job. Pow Pow took that extra pass away. And that is off of Kohler. Look like 
I'm going to say it was actually last touched by Johnson. Thought it might have clipped the arm of Kohler as Morgan Sharps checks in. Sharps, first half, 13 points on 5 of 8 shooting. She came out hitting from distance, then found a couple of buckets around the paint. Went back outside, hit one more three before halftime. And I like the move to get Sharps back in. As you're clicking offensively, try and get her into a bit of a rhythm as the rest of the offensive flow seems to be working for the Falcons. Velasco had nowhere to go, trying to force it up to beat the shot clock. Saw there the defense by Fawiley. As you said, the Columbia, South Carolina product. Absolutely wonderful prep career as well. Winning several state titles. Contributing as a seventh grader is just mind-boggling to me. What an opportunity to have, right? And there's Kitts with the mid-range game. Just always looks under control, very comfortable wherever she shoots the basketball. And you can just see Kitts as these games have gone on for South Carolina. She just continues to get better and better and more comfortable with her role within this squad. Really solid defender. Offensively, her game just continues to grow. Pow Pow gets her hands on it again and this time has the steal. Kitts has deep position. She'll get the catch against Hill, get around her and score two more. Everything Chloe Kitts touches right now turns into a bucket. And right now, offensively, she's doing it both inside and out. Morgan Sharps, you give her space, she'll do that. 16 for Sharps, fourth three. I'm going to hit on it again, but the quick release of Sharps has just really made it so she can operate against a very difficult South Carolina defense. And Hall can score from the outside there, gets the bucket. It's the second time she's gone all the way to the bucket tonight. She's so hard to defend her because she can get any kind of shot fake, you have to acknowledge her from three. She can take you off the dribble and get all the way to the rim with her quick athleticism. Hill from the corner. Here comes Full Wiley. Kitts running the floor, and Sharp saw that pass. South Carolina's sixth turnover. It's over to Fleming. Shoots it over Cardozo. And Olivia Hill battling for that rebound. Hit the deck. And our media timeout. South Carolina 67, Bowling Green 43. We'll continue on after this break. Well, last year at this time, they were coaching together. Now head coaches for their respective programs, Don Staley, South Carolina, Fred Shamil, Bowling Green. Those two have spent a lot of time together over the last decade plus. You see that there, and Staley went on to go into the stands and say hello to Coach Shamil's entire family. And you gotta love the reunion, and really you gotta love what Coach Staley has done coming here to Bowling Green, playing her former assistant coach's team, bringing this great crowd here tonight to the Stroh Center. It's been a wonderful show. Great for both these squads. You said it earlier, and it's worth saying again, Dawn Staley will play anyone, anywhere, anytime. And that's why her team year in and year out is in the conversation for the national title. Velasco trying to find some space up high. They get it over to Sharps. Ball knocked away from Fleming. Full Wiley right up on her. And a little too much there from Full Wiley. That is going to be her second. And you almost feel bad for Fleming at this point. South Carolina has just sent defenders at her in waves, and it's been Johnson, it's been Full Wiley, it's been Hall, and she's just had tough sledding all night long. Runner no good for Sharps. Here's Full Wiley the other way. Attacks the basket, gets it to roll. Malaysia Full Wiley now has four points. Fleming high arcing three to get it over top of Fagan who was running out at her and the ball ends up in the hands of Sharps. Leads Bowling Green with 19. You can't lose her offensively for Bowling Green. She's been the most consistent answer in this ball game. You just see her confidence continuing to grow. Layup for Ashlyn Watkins. Wat and, um, 
It doesn't matter who it is right now. That high-low look that South Carolina has gone to, simple offensively, but they've just been so efficient out of it. They've been getting whatever they want. For Wiley, again, bodied up. Fleming, no whistle that time. Bowling Green has hit nine threes in the ballgame, nine out of 22. Velasco, left hand, got it up. Watkins the board. There's Full Wiley the other way. She's got Fleming in front of her. Got all the way to the basket, couldn't finish it. The follow, and it's going to be an and one. Sonia Fagan stayed with it, and the junior has a chance at a three point play. And you see there the flex motion from Pow Pow on the bench, and I think this one comes down to something very simple. South Carolina is very big, and they are a problem inside, and you've seen it really throughout this one, points in the paint heavily favoring the Gamecocks. And they've at times been very efficient from three, but they're at their most deadly when they get the ball inside. They go through those talented bigs, those dynamic bigs, great athletes on the perimeter as well to surround them. And again, just a talented bunch, the number one team in the country for a reason. Sonia Fagan, her athletic background coming from her mom and her dad. Mom Sherry played basketball at Washington. Dad Charles at Morgan State. Sharps just sees a little bit of space, but is well off the mark with that one. And Porter able to gather. She'll go right to work, and Erica Porter couldn't get it to go with the left hand. Another really great move by Porter, just not able to capitalize. Now Fagan will face up against Hill. Her baseline jumper, no good. For Wiley comes in for the rebound. She just flat out wanted that one more. And now Tessa Johnson will give South Carolina another chance on this possession as we are inside a minute remaining in the quarter. Full Wiley had a quiet first half, but it started to make her presence known in this third quarter for South Carolina. Watkins right into the body of Hill, and it's an offensive foul. It's number two on Ashlyn Watkins. Coach Staley did not like the call. She's smirking a little bit about that, that one afterwards, still shaking her head like, are you kidding me? And that was one of those 50-50 ones. I think the official probably saw the shoulder drop. That's going to be a tough call either way. Tighter ball game. That argument would still be going on. Well, and she might continue to let the official here because, as we've said, she's had quite the go so far offensively for her team. It looked like a good take there by Watkins. Yeah, she had a good case. Porter underneath. Had three, four defenders there, and South Carolina wanted a walk as she stepped through the defense. Erica Porter, a chance to add to her three points tonight to go along with six rebounds. Porter not a very good free throw shooter on the season coming in. She was just 5 of 15 entering this ball game. In the first half, she was 1 for 4. But you got to like what you've gotten out of Porter if you're Coach Shamil. Coming off the bench tonight, as you said, it's kind of been in and out of that starting lineup. you got to love that she's answered the bell. She's come in here. She's given you some really solid minutes. She's played well inside, been physical with those dynamic bigs from South Carolina. Has given you a very solid effort. Just hasn't been able to finish here, but has some, had some great moves, a great pivot there to get inside and get to the free throw line. One more for Porter. Bowling Green as a team, 8 out of 11 at the free throw line. South Carolina, 6 for 6. And you'd think if Bowling Green wants to make noise in the MAC later this year, Porter's going to have to play a role in that run. So continuing to see her figure it out here for the Falcons is very important. Mid-American Conference play beginning January 3rd. Left wing three, too much. Watkins comes in, takes it away. Underneath stays with it and has a chance at a three-point play. South Carolina flat out right now is going to get every miss and Bowling Green not getting a body on them. And that 1-3-1 zone from Bowling Green, I get the idea. You really want to clog up the lane. You don't want to give too much space for those bigs. You want to eliminate the high-low look that truly has throttled you at times during this game. But in doing so, you're giving up a lot of second-chance opportunities, and you're giving up those three-point looks as well. And South Carolina has made you pay. South Carolina trying to keep it out of the hands of Bowling Green's guards as time expires in the third. And South Carolina outscores Bowling Green by 10 in the third quarter to extend their lead to 31 with 10 minutes to play. 78-47 the score, number one in the country. Looking to stay perfect and move to 11-0.
Falcons, one more quarter to battle. Fourth quarter underway here in Bowling Green. Brad Wozniki alongside Brandon Bosch. Thank you for joining us on your Tuesday evening as Bowling Green hosts the number one team in the country, South Carolina. And full Wiley, full speed the other way. Great transition offense. Lead to a couple of free throws where South Carolina is six of seven tonight. You see there the athleticism on full display from full Wiley put it when we were getting prepared for this one. I put, when I've watched her play, she seems like an absolute stud. She's got that alpha mentality, and I feel like down the road, you see her sophomore, junior, senior year. She's gonna take the bull by the horns, and this team, I think, is really gonna flow through her. Such a dynamic point guard. She can score from three, was very efficient against Presbyterian from three. Tonight has done it a little bit more slashing, but defensively, it's there every time, night in and night out. So again, one of those superstar guards for Coach Dawn Staley. She was ranked number 13 player overall in the class of 2023. And just pushed South Carolina's lead to 33 here in the opening minute of the fourth. Not bad when the number 13 prospect in the country is right in your backyard either for Coach Staley. Got to figure too, you're battling your teammates for the top rankings, right? Yeah, you probably look at the top <laughs> 10 and you're looking at most of them on the floor right now for South Carolina. It's off the foot of Kohler, able to recover. Seven on the shot clock. Kohler off the switch, now has Full Wiley on her. And Full Wiley, the block, ends up in the hands of Kitts. I'll tell you more about the night for Chloe Kitts coming up as Raven Johnson, late decision, dumps it off to Cardozo. Gives Cardozo now 11 points, five rebounds, five assists, three rebounds. I really like this lineup on the floor for South Carolina. Bree Hall, really the only omission starting out of this fourth quarter, and she's been absolutely dynamic from three as well, but this crew right here, very solid defensively, and continues to have that size presence inside for South Carolina. That was a rare look for Kohler, unable to draw iron. Now Kitts wants it one-on-one. -on -one. Help came over from Porter. Pow, pow, nice dish to Cardozo. She'll gather, throws up a wild shot, and Cardozo limping a bit as she comes back up the floor. Paige Kohler with the left hand, no. And Cardozo still noticeably limping. Velasco's going to try and attack her, or at least thought so for a moment. Might look for a clear out here. Trying to get Porter out of there. Velasco will attack, and is blocked from behind by Cardozo. You can see the reaction on her face. When she went up with that last one underneath at the other end, I don't know if she took a shot to the hip or if she was stepped on. She's going to go to the bench, see if she returns with 8.08 remaining in South Carolina in complete control of this game. Pretty impressive. She was limping on one leg and still able to pull off the block. That's a good job by Fleming just to stay in front, and Porter gets the jump ball. And not to say it's ever a good thing, but it's nice to see Cardoso on the sideline reaching for that ankle and not her knee. You know, you hate to see any kind of injury for any player, but... You, know, you always got to be very, very careful with just those awkward non-contacts when it comes to knees. So it's good to see it's an ankle for Cardoso. Bree Hall returns. This is Pow Pow, the Oregon transfer with it. She was all Pac-12 honors all three seasons at Oregon. And Chloe Kitts just continues to be Chloe Kitts. Matches her jersey number with that, with that jumper right there. And she is just blossoming before our eyes. See if South Carolina can take advantage of the Bowling Green turnover. Pow Pow, right wing three, smiles over the bench. She's got a dozen. And just no hesitation from Pow Pow there. The quick pass to the corner. Continue to see the unselfish play on display from this South Carolina team. That three puts Pow Pow right on her season average of 12 a game. Her season high is 15. That came against Utah. And really just a steadying presence for this South Carolina squad. Does a little bit of everything. Pow Pow the rebound. Full Wiley thought about the pull up. Takes a dribble. Can't knock it down. 
Bowling Green wants to push the pace. Velasco sees Fleming all alone up ahead. Lexi Fleming just outran South Carolina's defense. And Kitts and Full Wiley and Pow Pow have played a lot of minutes in this quarter. And you see their coach Staley taking the time out, I think, just to get some fresh bodies out there on the floor. And right, last bucket gives Fleming nine points on the night. 6.38 remaining, 87-49, your score. Well, Chloe Kitts tonight has had herself a night. Productive from the beginning. She's been able to get the job done on the glass, get her touches inside, and finish consistently. Look at the numbers she's put up. 21 of South Carolina's 87 points. I think beyond just the 21 points, it's the high efficiency play that she has executed throughout this one see the sophomore and really should be her freshman year this year as you said left high school early to come and join this squad you see that paying off for the sophomore now and that high low combination between her and Cardoso is going to be an absolute menace in the southeastern conference this year South Carolina on the season shooting 52 percent from the field 60 percent tonight shot 64 percent in the first half and Making sure things don't get carried away as Watkins and Velasco get a little tangled up. See Sharps come over, help with, you know, getting Velasco up there. Watkins took her for a little bit of a ride. You know, Velasco, Sharps, Fleming, any one of those players, never going to back down. You love the fight in this Bowling Green team throughout this game. Have not backed down, as you said. Trying to get the backdoor cut to Hill. Last touch by South Carolina with nine on the shot clock. Sometimes when you play big time opponents, you almost want to take the film, burn it, move on, not talk about it. But I think if you're Bowling Green, you've got a lot of positives to look at when you leave this game. You've really done well on the glass for the most part. Porter has played excellent throughout the game. And Porter went right to work there against Sakima Walker. You got to feel really good about what you've gotten out of Sharps as well off the bench. Long season, as we highlighted before the game, this month of December is probably less about wins and losses for Bowling Green and more about just figuring out how they're going to operate moving forward. And I think this is another piece in the puzzle of their season that they'll look back on and really draw some positives from. You can go and try and finish out your non-conference schedule, possibly playing some other mid-majors. But you're playing a couple of Big Ten teams and the top team in the country and in the SEC in South Carolina here tonight. And, and I love, and we got to highlight it again, but Coach Staley coming on the road to play this game. You look at their schedule, they're out of conference. They don't back down from anybody either. And you see that in their coaching pedigree. Obviously, they have a similar philosophy. Spent a lot of time together of, Let's challenge our teams early so we're ready late in the year to make a run when it's most important. South Carolina is going to begin SEC play on January 4th at Gainesville, taking on the Florida Gators. Off the back rim on the first for Bree Hall, who was 11 of 13 from the free throw line coming in here. Did not attempt a free throw in the first half, but she is an improved free throw shooter overall. She comes out of that Dayton, Ohio area where you've had some absolute powerhouse female basketball teams in Huber Heights, Wayne, Kettering Alter, another one in that area that for quite some time have really dominated Ohio basketball, that Cincinnati, Dayton area, really you know, at the forefront when we get to the final four in OHSAA play. Just one more note on the improvement for Bree Hall and her improved free throw shooting. Last two seasons, 63 and 61%. Coming in here, 84%. Which is very odd for such a high percentage three-point shooter. You know, sometimes it's just the form, it's the distance, it's just trying to get down, you know, into a system that works for you. And obviously she's feeling much more comfortable with what her routine is at the free throw line this year. Sharps out to Hill. 
Bowling Green bench thought she might let it go. And instead it's thrown into the Bowling Green bench. Nice catch there by J.C. Tubergen. And we are just under five minutes remaining, taking us to a timeout. 87-51 here in Bowling Green. Well, next up for South Carolina, they are at East Carolina. They're in Greenville, North Carolina. Take on Florida to start SEC play on January 4th and Mississippi State at Missouri, Kentucky. Coming up, game you did not see there on January 25th, South Carolina matched up against LSU in Baton Rouge, taking on the defending national champs. And that's going to be an absolute major big time title bout between those two squads. You'd expect them to be at their best for that one. And if you're South Carolina, You've challenged yourself in the out of conference. You've got to feel good about where you're headed. You've developed some depth early on in this season. I think that's really to your advantage, and you're hoping to be clicking on all cylinders when you take on the LSU Tigers. Yeah, given how much South Carolina lost to be where they are right now, Don Staley's got to be pretty content. They're going to continue to have that target on their back everywhere they go. And Bowling Green was trying to get a jump ball. Instead, it's going to be a foul against Velasco for Amy Velasco, her third. It was very close to being a tie-up there. And you mentioned it a second ago, but when you look at this South Carolina team, yes, they lost some major pieces. You lost Zaya Cook. You lost Aaliyah Boston. But you had such a depth of talent, and you've recruited at such a high level over time that you feel really good about where you're at. You've been able to go out in the transfer market and get the right pieces that fit into what you want to do. You know, your philosophy as a team. So I think Coach Staley really has it clicking. I think everyone's a tad confused here. Off the baseline inbounds to Tessa Johnson. They got one on one. Fleming comes down to knock it out of bounds. Just as soon as Walker turned her back, Fleming got her hand in there. Johnson baseline catch and shoot. Tessa Johnson, 2023 McDonald's All American, is the state of Minnesota Gatorade Player of the Year. Nice when you can bring a McDonald's All-American off your bench as your 10th or 11th man. Woman, sorry. And she will continue to be one of those players that I think, like Full Wiley, will have a bigger role as she continues on. Morgan Sharps, 22 points on the night. Sharps has got to feel great after this game against the top team in the country. She's really put on a show. Quieting the crowd, Ashlyn Watkins. Nine points, seven boards for Watkins. And Watkins can do a lot of different things for this South Carolina squad. A great defender, really good on the boards. And if she can continue to hit from that kind of mid-range area, I think she just makes herself even more valuable to this team. Can she get into that high-low look that they found so much success in tonight? Into Hill, keeps it out of the hands of Watkins. Eight on the shot clock for Velasco. Corner for Sharps, can she stay hot? Yes, 25 for Sharps. And for Morgan Sharps, she's now one point shy of her career high. She had 26 against Southern Indiana. Off the miss for Walker, here come the Falcons. Just over three to play. And Sharps finds Porter. Got Watkins on her back. The pump fake and the reverse finish. Nice moves, Erica Porter. That's really good footwork by Porter, getting Watkins in the air and a finish. And you see this Bowling Green team 
And though they're down 30 plus, they continue to play with great heart and effort. Steal by Fleming. Fleming's gonna leave it. It's Velasco getting the look. And Fleming hustles down the loose basketball. Two and a half to play. And Fleming desperately looking for Sharps. Knows that she's been the hot hand. There is Sharps. Too strong on that three. Kicked away. And Fleming knocks it away. Diving on it. Velasco, look at his effort from Bowling Green. Scoreboard doesn't matter. Falcons playing to the end. Much to the delight of the Falcon faithful. We'll look at this effort again. Fleming knocked it away first. Tipped it. Velasco dives for it. you got to give Fleming a ton of credit. She's had a tough night offensively, and again, a lot of that has to do with the South Carolina defense and how they've really pinpointed her as the linchpin of this Bowling Green offense. Sharps has stepped up, but to see that effort late in this game when it really probably hasn't gone exactly how you drew it up for Fleming, you got to love it. And that's a sign of a leader, and that's a sign of someone that you can depend on night in and night out. While we got a moment, we can look ahead for Bowling Green with 2.06 remaining. South Carolina 91, Bowling Green 59. The Falcons head to Bloomington this Friday. Big 10, MAC matchup. Then conference play at Central Michigan up in Mount Pleasant to start before getting the MAC home opener against Western Michigan on January 6th. Eastern Michigan to follow. And then a matchup that I think a lot of people have circled on their calendars, especially if you're a Bowling Green fan when they're at Muncie to take on Ball State. Former Bowling Green Falcon Nyla Hampton now part of that Ball State program will be facing your former teammates. That's a big time matchup, and you'd think both teams know that that's one of the key games in the MAC this year. Getting all the way to the rack, Lexi Fleming has 11 on the night. Three assists, seven rebounds, and a timeout for a substitution. Gonna bring in Full Wiley. And Don Staley wants to keep the action going. Officials recognize. The ball will be inbounded back into play here in a moment. And Coach Staley was none too happy with the defensive jaw on that possession. Displaying her frustration in a variety of ways. Reminder to stay with us when this one goes final. We'll show you the final stats and get some post-game commentary. I love it, though. You see how hard Bowling Green is playing right to the end. And you see Coach Staley, and that's why she's one of the best in the business. She's coaching this thing like it's the NCAA championship. You see there, she's holding her players accountable, even late in a game like this where they're up 30 points. And that's why people love playing for her. That's why you love going there, because not only does she take your talent and elevate it, but she's going to hold you accountable and make you better. Velasco gets the handoff to Sharps. Now Porter facing up against Walker. will hand it off to Sharps. Sharps trying to get to the basket. Couldn't lay it up and in. And Full Wiley lobs it in. And Walker never really established position there. Felt like Full Wiley just kind of forced the issue too early. I feel like Full Wiley knew exactly where she wanted to go, like you said. Just never really had a target for where she could get the ball to Walker. And Bowling Green's going to bring in five new bodies. Clerkley in, Tubergen in, McGuff, Zekin, and Paige Kohler. And the five going out for Bowling Green get a nice hand. As we near one minute to play. And in a 32-point game, you'll love to see most of this crowd has stayed till the end, cheering their Falcons on in a valiant effort. Well, about 4,000 in attendance here tonight. Taking you back a little bit to last year when Bowling Green women's basketball made it all the way to the Fab Four in the WNIT. Falcons had a chance to host against Columbia. 
Columbia coming out on top in front of a great crowd. As it rolls off, McGuff a good box out. Kieran McGuff out of Bishop Watterson High School. Her father, Kevin McGuff, head coach for Ohio State women's basketball. McGuff will put it on the floor. And we get a foul, a hand check foul. We talk about McGuff, another one of those talented freshmen. Her and Kohler have really you know, made their presence felt so far on campus here in Bowling Green. We think that's a solid core to build around in the future for the Falcons. See if Bowling Green can get one more good possession here before this one's over. Kohler, knocked away for a moment, finds McGuff in the lane. She is blocked. Zekin's got it. And foul there from Watkins, her third. Falcons had the shot clock winding down. 5.6 seconds remaining and going to the line, Sophie Zekin. Zekin out of Brighton, Michigan, six foot two senior. Has earned a starting role as of late. Made her first career start last game. Now playing in her 81st career game for Bowling Green. And in that last game for Zekin, she did have 12 points and 10 boards. First career double-double. Second free throw good. The final seconds will tick down here in Bowling Green. A great effort from Bowling Green. But South Carolina shows why they are number one in the country. 93-62 the final. The Gamecocks are now 11-0. Bowling Green will drop to 6-3. Falcons first loss here at home and just their third home game of the season. Bowling Green, quick turnaround now. You get ready Friday to go to Blooming to take on the Indiana Hoosiers, number 15 in the country. And another big time opponent. We talked about, you know, this team as a whole challenging themselves throughout the month of December. It's only going to pay off come Mac play. Again, you've got a lot of positives to take out of this one against the number one team in the country. And Fred Shamil, some nice moments there with familiar faces. His former team coming here to the Stroh Center tonight. No matter the outcome of this game, this game benefits both sides. It does, and you see a lot of players there that are very excited to see Coach. And probably a lot of kids he recruited to South Carolina, you would think they're happy for him, happy for his opportunity here at Bowling Green. He's had quite the start to his coaching career here in Bowling Green. Got to be excited for the future. Again, a solid effort from the Falcons tonight. I'm sure Dawn Staley in South Carolina will keep an eye on Bowling Green and how Fred Shamil does in his first season in the Mid-American Conference. And for South Carolina, you get East Carolina next, then SEC play. Your final numbers in this one. South Carolina shoots 58% from the field, just above their season average. Out-rebound the Falcons by seven. 21 assists for the Gamecocks and the points in the paint. You knew there was going to be some separation there, 48-16 to 16 tonight. And it, that was their advantage throughout this game. And we knew that coming in, that their size was going to be a problem for the Falcons throughout this game. And it was Kitts, it was Cardoso, it was Watkins. And they really hit them from a lot of different ways. And they're just such a dynamic team. They can score from three, they can score from inside. They get to the free throw line, they take care of the basketball. It's a lot of positives, and that's why they're the number one team in the country. And you see that even with the losses that they sustained from last year to the WNBA, they're still in a great spot heading into SEC play. 23 consecutive road wins now for South Carolina as they will continue on the road next. And Bowling Green will go on the road themselves. This was an SEC Mid-American Conference matchup that you love the opportunity for Bowling Green to have this chance here inside the Stroh Center, the number one ranked team in the country. And you love, like you said, to have it here at home against a wonderful crowd that was really into the game throughout. Even when it got a little bit lopsided, they really cheered on the Falcons. You felt like this was an environment, a fun one. And if you're South Carolina, playing games like this are only going to make you better. Obviously, you're the more talented team coming in, but playing in tough environments are going to get you prepared for what you want to do come March, come early April, when you're playing all across the country, and you never know what the environment is going to hold. So this is ultimately going to pay off for both of these teams, and it's a benefit for both programs. You love to see these kind of matchups, and you love to see big-time opponents take on these mid-majors, especially at home. 
South Carolina finishes with four players in double figures. Chloe Kitts leads the way with a season-high 21 on 10 of 12 shooting. Bree Hall had 18 with four threes. Tahina Pow Pow had 12 points, all from distance. And then you get 11 for Carmilla Cardoza. For Bowling Green, Morgan Sharps just missed her career high, finishes with 25. Lexi Fleming was also in double figures with 11. Amy Velasco added nine, and Olivia Hill had eight. As we look back at some of the highlights in this game, South Carolina was attacking early. The Gamecocks led by 10 after the first 10 minutes. And they got off to such a great start, that high-low look from Kitts and Cardoso, and then you had Hall early from three was just absolutely stroking it, and then their defensive effort really put BG in a bind right off the bat. BG went to that 1-3-1 zone look, was giving up three-point shots, giving up second-chance opportunities, and then the size really started to wear on him as the game went on. But again, valiant effort from the Falcons. Just too much South Carolina, too much talent on that squad. For Bowling Green, you came in here facing the number one scoring defense in the country. South Carolina holds opponents to 28% shooting. The Falcons shoot 36% tonight. It's another one of the things that I think small wins that you can take away for Bowling Green in this effort. Uh, you think so, and not only just small wins, I really think it's big ones. Sharps was a big positive tonight coming off the bench. Porter played really well after you challenged her, moving in and out of the starting lineup. You've got to be happy with the way that she answered the call. And looking forward, the goal was not to win. The goal was probably to be competitive if you were Bowling Green, to walk out of this with some answers. And again, you've got to feel really good about where you're at when Mac play comes. 93-62 the final. South Carolina improving to 11-0. Bowling Green drops to 6-3. As I am joined now in the broadcast booth by the head coach for Bowling Green women's basketball, Fred Shamil. And coach, a lot of emotions in this one, a lot of familiar faces. And for your team, again, you're seeing a top 25 team for the second of three times in this month. It's a heck of a gauntlet. I don't think I have much of a voice. This might not be a very good interview, but I'm going to try to get it done here. Um, you know, I thought we did some really good stuff. Um, didn't, get, didn't get a lot of shots to go down early. Got some good looks. Kids played extremely hard, as usual. Uh, things didn't fall for us. They made a lot of early threes. Uh, we didn't take care of some, some details that we needed to with the one mores in the corner, but, you know, that's a heck of a team. We're very well coached. Uh, all Americans up and down. Um, we're thankful that they came up here to play us. Yeah, you said it right there. To have the number one team in the country come here to the Stroh Center. You had just been to Iowa a couple of weeks ago to see Caitlin Clark and the Hawkeyes. Yep. Now you get Indiana coming up this Friday. Yeah, I mean, what, what a heck of a venue here, Iowa, and now we're going to Bloomington. So, you know, all the experiences that our young women are having uh, only builds from here on out. Uh, we're trying to build championship character, and I think they're well on their way. Well, Coach, we hope you get your voice back yeah, soon. It's you. on to Bloomington, and thank you for your time as always. Bowling Green head coach Fred Shamil as the Falcons fall tonight by a final score of 93-62. to South Carolina, number one in the country, improves to 11-0. That is going to do it for our broadcast. want to remind everyone, tonight's game can only be seen on ESPN. For my partner, Brandon Bosch, our director, Brandon Walters, I'm Brad Wozniki. Thank everyone for your time. Thank you for joining us on your Tuesday evening for this Mid-American Conference SEC matchup. South Carolina remains unbeaten. <laughs>